All right, and we are live. Uh, are we? Yep, we are live. It's going to take a second for this to turn on, but uh, hey, everybody. Uh, hey, it's hey. Friday. Good Friday. It's uh, terribly... Yep, my, turn are. the volume down. Oh, ah! <laughs> it's happening. There we go. I swear, it's never happened before. Welcome to the Friday edition of <sighs> Gigabytes TV slash live slash shoot a splash. Do the splash. We don't have a splash right now, but I think I can eventually add that somewhere. Or I can pull up my phone and put put it against that, right? It's awesome. So today, on our topics of to talk about, um, we're going to talk about, we're going to ask people questions on, well, how did you get into the hobby? How did you start war gaming, or if you start just do board games, or if you do magic? Like, how did you start doing it? We'd love to hear your stories. Um, I'll tell you my story. David will tell you his story. Um, I'll tell you a tale. Yes, there you go. A dark, dreary, Irish bog. I'm, I'm there. That's Here? Pretty much it. When, did you, like, when did you start game? When I heard of Banshee Hell. See, that's Irish. Banshee Hell? Yeah. When did I start gaming? Yeah. Uh, you started this store almost 10 years ago. Yeah, no. I, yeah, ten, well, actually, yeah, 10 years ago. I bought a uh, Battle from a Crag. <laughs> and I sat around my store painting because nobody ever came in. And <laughs> uh, the people who did come into the store kept asking me about it, and eventually I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Maybe I'll just start carrying it. So I, I bought like $1,000 worth of Games Workshop product. Wow. And it just kind of like took off from there. Yeah. Wait, so you had the game store. This is the when Gigabytes first started? Yeah, Gigabytes was originally an internet cafe. So. Ah. It, it, it's, good there's, story. A re- there's a reason okay. it's called Gigabytes. Let's start not, from the top. Let's start from the beginning, mistake, okay? Yeah. I'm a performer, so when I say start from the top, I mean start from the beginning. So Gigabytes. Yeah. Cafe was about having internet and food. Yeah, originally. It seemed okay. like a good idea when you're just moved to America and you're 22 and have no idea what to do. Wow. Curse. And this yeah. was before, like, everyone had their phones with 4G and, you know. Yeah, yeah. You had to pay for internet? You had to pay for internet. <laughs> uh, you had to pay me for internet. I mean, right. hey. Hey, Jay. Hey, Jay. <laughs> Hello. John's not here today, John Galvin, because he got so mean of, mad about me cutting him off all the time, so. I won't get mad. I'm trying to get better. Off He's sitting off over here, painting, crying into a corner. Actually, watching the video feed. Jerk. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So we opened Gigabytes ten years ago. He's over there giving the death eye. <laughs> we uh, the, internet, the internet cafe was good, but when you know opening in October two thousand and eight, no October two thousand seven, mm-hmm. and uh, the economy was didn't do so well immediately. It went boop. So, right after you, know, you people, opened it. People are giving you know their kids money for internet. Now, how did you get... So, you, you came at 22, or did you come a little bit before that, when you were... No, I was 22. I came to visit when I was 20, for a month, and then at 22, I moved here. So, how, what, was the, what was the process like? Because I know you... you just well, so what you visa. do, what you do is you cross into Mexico, and you give $500 <laughs> to these nice coyote men, and they put you into a truck, and it's really cool, because they put it full of pine straw, it's really comfy, and then it just drives fast to Canada Report. No, not really. <laughs> I almost believed it was Armstrong. <laughs> I was like, that's a good detail there. Yeah, yeah. No, you just, you got to get your visa and you got to open a business. Because <laughs> so, right. so. I know a lot of folks, like, they, they try to get work visas, but then they didn't, you know. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, it's, it's a conversation for another day and another climate. Hmm. But yeah, no, so we moved here, decided I loved Georgia too much, opened a store. Uh, Little did he know. Yeah, me, me and my lovely wife worked grueling hours, more hard than me because I'm lazy. And uh, just one day at Christmas, I think it was Christmas 2007, we went to the Mall of Georgia to the Games Workshop store. And I bought Battle from a Crag. And I'd just, I'd sit there and paint because it'd be really quiet during the day. And, but we had a bunch of kids and people would come in. I'm like, oh, what's that? What's that? I don't know. Playing it. And um, yeah, after, after a while, I just kind of started researching into it. And I did this tiny order for Games Workshop. And it just went nuts. It just took over. We got lucky. We got lucky because we started carrying it in like January. And in February, the other kind of big game store was called B&R Games. Uh, I, think, I think the owner now, he works for a distribution company. But they shut down, and a lot of their players came up to us, and they sawed up our first tables in the back of the store. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. <laughs> so, huh. good old Casey Cronin and Jeff Shea, who still come to the store 10 years later. Awesome. They, they built the first tables. Mainly Casey, because he's in construction. Jeff, you know, Jeff just gave his moral support. Thanks, Jeff. But these tables? No, not these ones. Okay, no, I was no, going to no, say, no, like, no, like, wow. Hey, it's Peter. Hey, Peter. You. Hello. Yeah, the pun master's here. Um, yeah, and I just took over. So eventually we would, like, rip down the walls, put up more tables. We sold off all the computers, put the tables in there. It was, really, it was kind of funny because we had, like, this little grass green area for, with a Wii. 
and we had like a wall and this gray area full of computers. <laughs> As we ripped down the walls, it's just it went from gray to green to tile, and it's just tables we took up the whole way. Wow. And then the whole side wall, we just you know put shelves up and put product on. So now, where was this located? That was Gigabyte's one. That was if you any of you buy what the Wing Cafe. It's right in the Wing, the same shopping center as the Wing Cafe. The Wing Cafe. Where yeah. where is that? Like half a mile. Oh, okay. So try to throw. Yeah, okay. no, we've always been in this area. Nice. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. No, that was cool. It was. Um, that was three years we did that, and then the opportunity to take over Marshall, the shop beside Marshalls came up, so we moved in there. Nice. That was really nice. It was like nice hardwood floors and stuff. It was an old land brick company, and then we huh. just kept adding product and adding stuff and doing events. So. But now it's even even bigger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now it's even bigger. Like two years ago, again, we moved in here. God, it's been two years already. It's the third year. Nice. And now we're taking over that space next door. So yeah. So, yeah let's segue into yeah, what's right. what's happening. So we now you know. All about where Gigabytes came from, which is an awesome story. And if you want to hear more, you just get this guy and start telling, you know, saying, tell us, David. You know, he could even gather around like a campfire. I really like Maker's Mark. Some simple syrup and some vanilla syrup. Get me that. Talk about whatever you want. I'll tell you how great you are. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about what's going on now with the expansion. What's, oh, what's well, the current plans or what's our ideas? You know, what's. Well, we're still working on stuff, so we've. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like all business, it's fluid. Right. Uh, so we're working on things. We're June first. We should be in that space. Uh, we're going to move the magic area over there and, and expand that. And then we're going to we're going to expand our retail. Um, yeah, just do a lot of renovations, clean up the store. That's my goal is to actually get things updated because I'm very mad at the person who stacked up the terrain today because I knocked over some of it as I walked in. Well, whose fault so, is that? Peter's looking guilty. <laughs> Over on the side. I, I'm gonna blame Peter today. Uh, Jay asks expansion question mark question mark. Oh, but first I gotta say this, Joe. Joe, this is an awesome comment. He says uh, he followed his dream of coming to America to open his elaborate toy store. Well, he wanted an internet cafe first, but the might of the toy emperor would not be ignored. The toy emperor. I like toy. it. I like it. Like that's toy, good. Toy poodle. And so the expansion. Yeah, this space that's next door that's currently nothing is actually a space that can be used. Yeah. Yeah, we're taking. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be bigger. It's gonna put the store to about nine thousand square feet. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. Gigabytes. We will not be stopped. That's right. More tables. More tables. More space. More tables. More games. Well, it's kind of handy because in, in a good old gigabytes tradition, uh, July first we've like quadruple booked the store. So it's, it's really great that we have that space. Yeah. <laughs> because we like to run events. Do we have plans? Like, we like to run a lot the, of events. What's the current plan on when it's gonna open? Uh, June first. June first. Soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's when they say we. Well, you never know. Like fluid. Fluid, right. Fluid. But the plan is, you know, is it is it a government thing? Because that usually takes longer. No, it's just a build out. Great. It's, okay. It's well, space, hopefully hasn't been, space hasn't been used in ten years. So this space, this shopping center has been empty ever since I moved to America. Wow. America. America. My best Tom Cruise accent. He's Tom Cruise has a great Irish accent. You ever seen? Really? Yeah. Did you ever see the movie Fire Away? Hmm. You should watch it. But I've heard best, that I heard him and him and Nicole Kidman. Best Irish accents. I've you'll heard ever Liam have. Neeson has a good accent. What? A good Irish accent. Yeah. Liam Neeson. Yeah. I guess. I well, he played you. Michael Collins, right? My last name is Collins. See, so. he played Qui Gon Jinn. The most important yeah. role of his life. It really is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> next up, <laughs> and then the moving conversation on. peters out. Right? Good job. And moving on. So we have now a new eighth edition stuff happening for Warhammer 40k for your 40k players. Mm. Um, we're going to talk about the War new 40Ks. rules, and then we're going to talk about maybe some ways that we can get new players involved, since it is new rules, they're simplified. Um, I have to make a choice. If you can see that, I have to choose between one of those two things. These are the two that I wanted to choose from. So you have to help me figure out if it's Orcs or Dark Eldar. Um, and someone's going to say Space Marine, I know it. Someone's yeah. going to say it. While, he's, while John's talking about his choices, Peter's going to join us. Hello, Peter. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Pe- All right, Peter, Pe- go ahead Pe- and seat. Peter's the pun master. Only on occasion. Oh, only on occasion. I think I, I'm going to have to say that Either of those choices are great. Oh, cool. uh, I've always enjoyed Eldar. I've been playing them since third edition. Give Dark or take. Eldar? Well, Eldar and Dark Eldar nice. and Harlequin, and now our uh, lovely fractured uh, faction, I guess, would be the best way to put it. Sweet. But uh, them, and I'm hoping that along with how Age of Sigmar has done some updates to Orcs, so that they're a much, much more viable, sadly. Viable. Oh, everything is viable now. Oof. Have you guys they, seen they those? Were, you guys seen those eight edition against. rules? Oh my god, those eight edition rules are phenomenal. Yeah. They just, they just get better. Uh, they're, they're probably going to be very strong, much like their Age of Sigmar counterparts, and 
Yeah, my seraphim are having issues with them. I, I just Tom, really am. Tom, he's asking for you to give him help, not to say choose wisely. <laughs> Tell him which one to pick. <laughs> yeah, I need your opinion. Which one? Although he does you? say BDSM. He was he was driven to the BDSM. I mean, look at that face. Something about these. Uh... That armor. I he wants know. to be whipped into shape. Spikes. I understand. Oh Spikes. God! <laughs> <laughs> it's already if begun. You, if you happen to ever be here when Peter's working at the store, just cover your ears because the amount of puns is just—it's lovely. That's it's great. Yeah, I that's enjoy that's that's using a, the that's, English, that's, German, that's a word and other languages that I have access to. Yeah. Uh, so, Peter, tell us your thoughts on the newest Eighth Edition th thing. So, uh, what did they just add? Uh, they said they took away formations now. Yeah, that was today. Well, so first, they, yeah, so today they said no more formations. Uh, instead, they've added a bunch of new detachments of how you build your army. So instead, you happen to own like <laughs> five books with different, you know, you can have this model, that model, this model, this model, which is like Yanari. Like, who knows how yeah. to build a Yanari force, really? <laughs> uh, now you just have detachments. So depending on how you want to play, you'll get bonuses and, and hmm. strictures. And I was just, I quickly glanced over because I don't read that fast. Um, is. The only holdovers you had to have the same keywords. So if your keyword Imperium for this mm -hmm. attachment, keyword Tyranny for that attachment, which is cool. Okay. Which it opens a lot because that means for Eldar, Dark Eldar, and Yanari, they'll probably have keyword Eldar. Yeah. Cool. So there'll be a detachment that says you, these things here, and you have to have this detachment of Eldar. See, so, yeah, I, that's going to be making it really easy for new people to come in because that's one of the issues I ran into with. 7th edition, since I've kind of stepped out of it for a long time, mm. is trying to jump back in and suddenly you've got four or five books mo or more to try and build an army list out of. Mm. Well, look at you, are all gone now. Uh, now they're all gone. You have one thing, supposedly, to build off of. So and, Well, no, you're going to have you're gonna have Man Rook, which is free. Man yeah. Rook's going to be free. And then you're going to have uh, four books, I think, in total. So there's Chaos, Imperium, uh, Xenos, and then some fourth book that I can never remember. <laughs> The other one. We are so, doing it live, Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I could get Dark Elder, and then I could supplement it with Harlequins or Eldar. Yeah, if that's the way really? I'm reading it right, is like it's just attachment. Is just if you have keyword Eldar. It's the way like okay. in in Sigmar is they all have keywords at the bottom, and like you can mix and match order because they might have keyword order and stuff. Gotcha. Like that. So and they have detachments of battalions. That's like. Uh -huh. Uh, what's cool and the new Caradrons have and it's, it's like all the flying bullets for Caradrons but then it's also prosecutors so the flying wing dudes for <laughs> so that's okay. kind of awesome nice oh hey want to start 40k do you guys have any tips for new players wanting to start yes uh, start collecting these things right here this is why because I have not started yet the 8th yeah, edition yeah whatever into. like every faction has it to start collecting and they all have between what is it four and 500 points in them mm -hmm. yeah. and then they're all going to usually have a troop a vehicle and a hero and with the new, well, the new detachment, so it's actually going to be perfect because Sweet. in old 40k you had to have an HQ and two troops, right? And that was kind of store battle. They have a, battle, a patrol detachment that's an HQ and one troop now. Nice. Which is basically that. And then you can have, you know, up to two elites, up to two heavies. Sweet. So these are literally playable out of the box now with the new edition. So if you, you know, if you're like the type like me where, yeah, I played video games all the time, $60 for a video game was... Just above that for all these. And oh yeah, no. When, when you look at it, like I mean, so the Death Dread and the Mech alone is eighty something dollars. Right. So you're getting the knobs and the boys for free. And this Dark Elder one, this uh, what's that one called? I forget. The Raider or the, the, the Raider? Yeah, yeah. So the Raider vehicle, what? That's forty. The model alone. Right? Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Yeah. Okay. But uh, uh, Reavers are like thirty-six dollars. Yeah. Right. And a direct order, so it's actually really nice. The easiest way to get Reavers is in that box. Nice. Rather than order them otherwise, yeah. Sweet. Kind of cool. Okay. Yeah. So no formations. Is there any other things since Monday that uh, releasing they've every done? Day, yeah. Right? This is why we actually did our videos there because they just keep right. releasing so much info, and it was so much fun cutting John off repeatedly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we love it, John. He's so comfy over there. <laughs> Famous little Birdman. Uh, morale. They did. They've changed morale, so you no longer. It's. It's actually been. Listen. Every time I talk about. If you want to practice it now, just play Age of Sigmar because it's it's very close. Uh, so it used to be leadership, you fight combat, you lose models, uh, subtract your, your minus leadership. Your leadership nine, you lose three models, your leadership six, you roll mm -hmm. two d six. If you're higher than your leadership, you run away, right? That's old leadership. Mm -hmm. Completely gone. Uh, now wow. your leadership is a number between you know three and ten, right? Okay. Ten if you're demons, jerks. Uh, <laughs> Because they're fearless, right? Basically, fearless is going to have a really high leadership. Okay. Uh, so, so work with a spaceman, right? So an average spaceman is leadership seven. Uh, now, you literally take your wounds for the whole turn. So from shooting, from combat, you add up all the wounds you've taken that turn. At the end of the, end of the turn, you roll a d6, right? And you add mm -hmm. it, and you add it to the wounds you've taken. Whatever you've beaten your leadership stat by, 
is take that many models off. They're either overran, they run away, they get cowardly. Yeah. So the idea is this, right? So a space marine is leadership seven. I think a, I think a, a terminator is probably leadership eight, if I remember correctly. I can't remember this one. That's the thing. So a terminator has to lose three models before he's even affected by leadership. Ah. Uh, terminator okay. squad is usually only five guys, so right. You know. Right. It's they're essentially fearless. So space marines have to lose two models before they might lose an extra model if they roll a six. Okay. So these tougher armies will have slightly higher leadership, but they'll have lower numbers, where something like a guard is probably only going to be leadership five, I imagine, or six. So the second right. a guard loses any models, they're going to lose on the die roll, they're probably going to lose stuff. Uh -huh. But then you, you know, things like guard and orcs, and they'll, they'll have, uh, and cultists, they'll have apostles and commissars to probably buff them up. Right. You know, and so you're going to use models that you never use. Nobody uses dark apostles, even though they're small. Huh. Yeah. Uh, if you ever read the Marduk novels, like the dark, yeah, get used to. It. I'm gonna cut you off. No. If you ever use the Marduk, like the read the novels for the Dark Apostle, like they make Dark Apostle seem so cool. And then you look at the rules in the game, and like oh, you're like a crappy chaplain. Oh. So, so. they're gonna also include terrain that gives buffs and minuses to yeah, uh, yeah. leadership, like they have in Age of Sigmar. They'll probably have mysterious terrain again. Yeah, I do know terrain now instead of being a cover because cover saves are gone, right? So cover is just a plus one to your armor save. Huh. Um, so that's going to be really awesome. So yeah. I just, the changes just seem so cool. And I, I yeah. just definitely like the way that they're approaching in Age of Sigmar, and I'm assuming they're doing the same in 40k, where it's not going to be negating armor, it's going to be moving it down a step. Yeah, no, that's already, that's, that was announced last week. So, whereas in the last edition, the bolter was AP5, so if you were a guardsman, you were toast, you had a 5 armor save. Well, you're probably still toast. <laughs> but but now like actually bolter is a bad example because it doesn't have a rend value. I don't understand why bolter doesn't have a rend value. Think flying missile. Uh, like last last can right. So last can yeah. last can was AP two killed everything in the game. All right. Now last can is minus three to your armor save. So you still get a save. So again, a terminator probably has a two up save. Gets hit by last can, he gets a five up save. Hmm. The difference is now a last can they, they all have damage values. So, whereas some weapons do damage one, you take one wound if you're wounded, a las cannon does d6 wounds. Hmm. So you might roll a one and just graze the Terminator, or you might roll a six and just blow him two other guys away. Yeah. yeah. So, it's kind of cool. I like it. But, well, it's kind of cool. Thematic. Well, it's cool in the way that, like, so you could fire a las cannon unit guardsman and roll a one and the damage, kill one guardsman, and you're like, oh, that's crap. Well, it's not meant to, right? It's meant yeah. to be fired at a dreadnought or monster creature or, you know, something with multiple wounds. You're just like, oh, I hope you roll a six and just knock that dread out of the way. Yeah. Yeah, well, dreads have eight wounds. So that's not gonna happen. And now yeah. people are going to be firing at, at swaths of guardians and just kind of cutting across them, like you see in all these animes, where it's just like, uh -huh. oh, I'm firing this giant cannon and then scraping it across the enemy front, and just watching hundreds of people die. Well, that's what things like heavy bolts are not going to be, because now you can, heavy heavy weapons are just uh, minus one if you move. So. Huh. <laughs> wow. I'm so glad I won like eight heavy bolts in right. uh, <laughs> So Thomas May says. Um, I, uh, I really like the new way to build lists. It lets you be more flexible with keywords. Like um, it would still be decidedly army specific, which is great. Yeah. Well, no, the, the the article said like the example the article said was Tyranids, Space Marines, Imperium. That was three of the keywords examples. So okay. if one's going to say Imperium. It's going to say Chaos. It's going to say Eldar or Eld Eldari. Because that's what they're all called now. Is okay. Uh, hey, uh, hey, hey, copyright. No. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, I'm never so I be think okay with that. I think never. there's still going to be detachments where you could have a marine, a guard, you know, a sister, or an inquisitor. So you can still technically ally. Okay. But that's instead cool. of it being a billion different books, it's just going to be here's your Imperium book. Take all these detachments. I like that. I mean, it's all conjecture, right? I have no idea. Games Workshop doesn't tell me a thing. <laughs> We wish they did. I, I read off the same websites as everybody else. Um, Joe says, uh, pick the army you love, uh, the lore slash look of, and go from there. Yeah, I agree with that in general. Yeah. And then Thomas says that a lot. orcs are great for uh, <laughs> conversions. Uh, conversions. But Dark well, Eldar, I read so a, cool. I read a cool thing that like it was 10 units that might be improved by A edition, and one of them was Loot Wagon, which apparently is still legal in the game. It's nice. not in the code. It wasn't in the codex anymore, but it was apparently in White Dwarf. Wow. Because they Loot Wagons. Yeah. So you basically uh, take whatever you feel like, and make it look orky. Wow, and stick I love it. And orc model on there, and now it counts. It's, it's yeah. legit. I love right. it. So uh, Robert asks, That's "Do you guys think, think orcs go faster?" Hmm? It's true. I wanted to paint my orcs kind of reddish, like have red like face paint and stuff, because they can go fat. Well, 
Not that they would. Um, do you guys think the average army will be smaller or larger than today? For example, 1,500 points is more or less models in 8th versus 7th. It's about the same. Well, 1,852 has some standard, but yeah, I think games are going to naturally get a little bigger. I think they're either going to stay at 2 or they're going to get bigger. The reason I say that is I think stuff's going to die a whole lot faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Go a game ahead. that took you two hours, mm -hmm. I can see it taking an hour and a half, maybe even an hour, because... Stuff doesn't go run away, right? It dies. So you you get a really good roll and you mow down like four marines. Mm -hmm. Well, those other six guys are leadership three. So on a f you know four, five, six, they're losing three more guys. Right. Yeah. So that unit's going to be gone, and it could be gone in one turn of shooting. Right. No. Right. The one thing I've been noticing with uh, Age of Sigmar versus Fantasy is before Age of Sigmar came out, I had maybe twenty five hundred to three thousand mm -hmm. points of lizardmen, and without buying any more lizardmen, uh, just last night I ran through the Azir app. Uh, that you can get, and it turns out I have something like forty four hundred. Yeah, well, they, uh, so they, I mean the, the value, the, the value, the value will change. Everything. I mean, I expect terminators to go up in value because they're going up. In yeah, value well, in game. So that, I'm just wondering, like, okay, sure, the fifteen hundred point might be one point level, but it might be fewer models. So, yeah. so I'm wondering how that's going to fall out. Mm, I don't know. We'll see. I don't think it's going to change too much. I think it's the 2000 is still going to be like the standard game. Yeah. I just think it's going to go a lot faster. So you'll see people wanting to play 25 or 3. So, uh, I mean, we, we have a group here that plays 10 to 15,000 points. Uh, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a very exclusive club. That, that's, yeah, that's a lot. I, I um, so Tom, uh, Thomas May, he says, uh, GW did say the average 1500 point game was 90 minutes. Uh, so that might give us a good idea on game length and size. I like that. Brandon asks, thoughts on no more formations. How do you think it'll change the tournament meta? That's a good question. Oh, it's fantastic. No more formations is great. Yeah. It's screw formations. So that, that allows a little more creativity, right? So that people can really, like, figure out what they want. I mean, that could change a lot. It might just... make you play fluffier armies as well instead of just playing, hey, this is the most broken cheese in the game. I'm going to bring that. Yeah, here's the thing. I, I hate to use the cheese because if you're playing in a tournament, yeah, I mean, go that, in, yeah, go yeah, in yeah, expecting to, to win. Like, I'm... I'm so I'm pretty liberal, but I really hate participation prices. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I agree with you, but I'm... Only I'm the gonna, winners survive. The, the, uh, listen, you're in a competition. If I'm going to go to a tournament and pay $15 to play in a tournament, I should, I should expect... A certain type of performance. A certain type of... But also to face a certain type of thing, you know, like... A tournament of that, like casual play and, you know, like our Friday night fights, right? They're for fun. They're designed yeah. for fun. Right. <laughs> Hot burning topics today. I, I, read, <laughs> I read that thread. So, but that's designed for fun, right? So, yeah. Well, um, I, I just mean that if they got, get rid of formations and they make it so that there's all these different setups you can choose, that all of them are viable. Yeah, well, so that's the let, idea. Let, let, sure, there's be, there'll be one or two that are going to be better than other, but just removing the drastically better, like, oh, you can only play this one race this one or two ways, otherwise you might as well not bring them to the table. That's something that bothers me because it makes people step yeah. away oh, from yeah, it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it means the unit, there's units that would never be used. Yeah. Huh. You know and, what I mean? And right. Like I was explaining yesterday with, with the Friday Night Fights, I said well, the reason Friday Night Fights originally came around is I wanted a reason to use Vanguard Marines. Right. So uh, we came up with the idea to mess with the army organizations to force you to take more fast attacks, and I think that's what GW is doing, is they're trying mm -hmm. to give you a reason to take units that you wouldn't normally take, like... Well, they give more choice. Like, for instance, if I'm just starting, I want to be able to pick the units that look cool and still mm -hmm. be able to use them. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, Corey uh, Denny says, Dark Eldar and Harlequins are winning me over. Corey, tell us more, because I love the look, so I'm, like, <laughs> really leaning toward it. I still have a thing, because orcs, when I played the original Dawn of War, uh, orcs are my first faction, and I've always loved them. I just don't like the whole butt sticking out thing when they standing there. Right? Well, that's what I was saying to you. Just uh, mix, mix in some Age of Sigma stuff. Yeah. Okay. If you, yeah. if you look at the Savage or uh, Savage Orcs, Orcs, and uh, the Brutes, <laughs> they look like, cool. Like Brutes for knobs and Savage Orcs as as oh, they're as, gorgeous as yeah. normal guys. And, uh -huh. them up um, and then Joe says, "Do you think the new morale will encourage using minimum squads to avoid losing chunks of your army to morale checks?" No, because it's going to matter in the army. So. A, a, a Spray Marine squad is still going to have 10 guys. A Terminator squad is probably going to have 5, right? But the thing is, even if you take 10 Terminators, you still got to lose a bunch of guys before right. it even matters. And that's a big community. That has to, and that's a draw of fire. Whereas opposed Orcs, Guard, it's actually going to entice them to take bigger units. Because a Guardsman unit, you would take the minimum 10-man Guard squad and then tanks, right? And you uh -huh. never saw Infantry Guard anymore. Right. Yeah. Because who wants all that? One sweeping advance on 50 conscripts and they're gone. Right. Right? But now, take 50 conscripts, kill five guys, they're all badly, they lose four guys. <laughs> so got 41 guys. Right. Yeah, the, yeah, cool. Get, get, the other thing is, is that a lot of the units in Age of Sigmar, and I'm sure they're pulling this over, the more units you have inside one squad, 
they get benefits to hitting additional yeah, attacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they'll have rules. Or rend, and, and they'll have, like and then also the, the idea, like Age of Sigmar does it really well, is you can modify. So I was saying to you, I was saying to Saint Peter last night with his orc warriors, you could take or his orc <laughs> Saurus warriors, you take unit ten, five swords, five spears, and the five swords go into melee. They can swing, and the five spears stand behind them. They have two inch reach, and they swing. And there's yeah. probably going to be something in that in 40k too, where you get advantage in armor guys different if they're melee units. So, yeah. Yeah. maybe uh, Corey know. says the Savage are the best orc models I've ever seen and then yeah, Tom cool. says if I did orcs I'd take some of the Iron Jaw orcs and make them Ard Boys so well that's the Brutes the Iron Jaws are the, oh. the other guys they're oh. still gorgeous oh, oh Iron, Iron Jaws faction I saw Iron Jaws yeah, they're, like, they're, oh. yeah, yeah I guess they're all well, the Brutes Jaws. are cool too he, he's, the Ard Boys make good good, good Iron Jaw orcs okay yeah. nice hey, gosh I mean, you're making my choices so tough yeah I mean the, it depends what you want to, to mod and convert a lot or do you want to have no, Snoody, I just like the default. Snoody space elves. Snooty. Well, the, the other thing that I'm curious about is if uh, GW, and I really hope they do, start releasing new models for some of the things that haven't changed since second edition. Mm. Like, oh, they uh, will. I, I said this on Monday. They, the, the company has 52 weeks in a year that they have to put releases. <laughs> so, right. well, I mean, it, it's true. Go, go, it's Gadget just, Games Workshop. It's just, it's been, it's been, what, 18 years or, or more that we haven't seen an update to, like, Warp Spiders? <laughs> Aside from, oh, they're resin now, but it's the same model, but it's resin. It's no longer going to weigh you down like it's a brick. Choice. I like the way like the Warp Spider. Uh, it's it, cool. It, it's just, it's cool, but it could be so much better. Oh, it could, but they'll change it. Yeah, yeah. Um, updates. I love it. And also some some of the Dark Eldar models you can't get, just period. They're out of stock and been out of stock for like eight months or more. Which ones? Oh, really? uh, there's certain parts of the Court of the Archon you can't get a hold of. Yeah, easily but and that's stuff like that. Probably going to go away or something. No, huh. oh, not the Medusas. Um. So next topic, we have Star Wars <laughs> stuff. So we got to talk about this uh, Spirit <laughs> Rebellion. Oh, we can, no, we can keep on going. <laughs> no. I oh no, I, just well, have well, my, I have my list of topics that we talk about. And I was just it's weird. I had Age of Sigmar next. Oh, AOS. <laughs> <laughs> so there. Or we can yeah. stay on 40k. What do you guys want? You just keep. You just type in what or you we're want. Just go, 40K, we're just going. We're just going to spread around. We're just going to spread around. We can talk about Atlanta United. Yes. Oh. Yes. Peter's a super fan. Super fan. Got two season tickets. I've been trying to drag him to a game for a minute. I love you all too much. I have to work. <laughs> it's true. It, it, it really is. He's always just saying, I've got to be at the store for yeah, X, Y, and Z reason. I'll watch it. I watch it on, on, on TV at home. Joe wants to update all fine cast metal models. He's looking at the Sisters of Battle. Yes! <laughs> yeah. Well, with, with, with the, the super, Gemini Superior. Superior? Superior? Whatever. It's the Triumph of the Imperium. Those models. That's kind of like the good tester of Sisters. So, mm. you might see Sisters soon because those models are great. <laughs> Hey, that, 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 the organ, the organ rhino. <laughs> yeah. It, if you literally if they that bring, thing, if they, we go like. Yeah, you know what? If they bring an update to that, it'll be music to my ears. Oh. <laughs> that pun too piping hot. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh my. I'm gonna go to hell. For <laughs> no, no, that's just the uh, frilly lace and trim. I got what? No. No, yeah, I, yeah, no, no, yeah, I, I, I got you know, it's on my basket on the way to hell. I'm getting the fine lace at this point. I'm already destined reaching, there. You're reaching too far. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, hopefully in the new edition we'll see new sisters. As like you say, we'll see updates to the resin model. I think resin's going away slowly but surely. I mean, it is. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised some models haven't changed already. Yeah. But. Well, one, one release a week, right? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Games Workshop, they plan two years in advance, so their next two years are pretty much planned. Like, mm -hmm. you, it's coming. So, <laughs> I'm excited for Deck Guard. It's going to be cool. I love it. Yeah. So AOS, what's AOS. the docket to talk about for today? I don't know. It's gonna chat about how awesome it is. Campaign yeah. is going really well. We have thirty people. We actually have. Oh man, there's so. Oh, many do we have the map over around here, or they have that with them? That's right over there. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, AOS is being awesome. Like we literally have people playing almost every night of the week now. It's awesome. So it's, it's been really cool. Yeah. And really fun. And as you add more factions, like definitely, you're seeing that the game is really evolving into its own thing. It's not fancy. Right. Um, it's it's now its own thing. It has its own identity. Uh, so this literally is, a campaign this, map. And this still hasn't been updated. Uh, I know this, this because I've taken this place here and it's mine now. Yes! No, these games have been a lot of fun. So over the top. What? It's not <laughs> over the... Well, I am over the top of the map right now, but... Yeah. we. Oh, you that enabled that one. I did, oh. I did. Why did I ask you to come here today? I can't remember. <laughs> um, CDs and my puns. I, I think you really like yep. me to be here for the puns. Yeah, I like yes. the first puns. So, but anyway, so, I mean, I had no idea. When I said campaign, I was like, okay, you know, you play through. But actually having a campaign map, it's really cool. Like, I hope I want to do that for 40K. Yeah. Especially with the Finn family. Yes, Joe Groves, I approve. <laughs> 
So this um, this is an escalation type thing. So you start off with smaller and then you kind of build up. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're gonna grow, and as you win, I think you gain advantages too, right? So yeah. Then, so. Initially, we're start all starting on the outer ring. So maybe this a couple. Is, this one will in. also be something. So for a lot of people getting into 40k, the new edition, this is something we will do um, for 40k. And the way we did this uh, originally for the sign up was, I think, it was fifteen dollars. Is that right, John? Yeah. You can speak. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it was fifteen dollar entry, or I think it was a fifty dollar purchase. I uh, got you free entry. So if you were starting the game, you bought a start collecting, you had your first 500 points, and you also had free entry into the campaign, basically. So we'll do that uh, as soon as we have a concrete date mm -hmm. for, for eight any, episodes. Any ideas on uh, what kind of map we'll be seeing? Is it going to be a particular planet that we want from uh, your lovely read, uh, readings? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Poor Katie. You know, I have to read the whole map again, because they did actually an article this week as well about how the warp storms and rifts have changed the whole galaxy. Right. So uh, I definitely I, have to check that out. I, I'm, I might be a little bit of an evil person, but I want to see if I can find the old picture of the galaxy map that still had the stunts on it. Yes. Yes. Squats. The stunties. Squats. Stunties. Squats. 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 Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, wow. squats and zoats. And so Ian says they just announced a new expansion for Imperial Assault. Yeah, yeah, just to, just today they did. They actually announced a new expansion and they announced new uh, allies packs. I haven't looked at them. Uh, well, what's the, the expansion going to be? Uh, it's like Heart of the Empire. So okay. it's probably on Coruscant, Coruscant? I imagine, maybe. Yep. It could be yeah, Kuat that's... as well. Well, that's uh, more like the shipyard. The hard you know. I don't know. I'm. I like Star Wars, but I don't. I don't follow it as deeply as. Like I never read the EU. Sorry, I'm too young. Okay, that's so. okay. You're not too young. I didn't just I've new... read some. Yeah, same. You can always look up Wiki Wikipedia. Wikipedia. <laughs> I do that's not up. even a pun. That's I, just I do, actually I what it is. Really cool. I do. I was reading all about Darth Maul yesterday on Wikipedia because the, the movies were on all day here at the stores. So nice. Yeah, did, have you watched Love any it. of the? Was it the Clone Wars series? Because they go into Darth Maul a lot there, uh -huh. and they make him really badass. Yeah, he did. I was actually happy he didn't actually die. Yeah, no. There's new Imperial Assault, a new expansion, like three new allies and three new uh, or three. Yeah, I think it's three or four new ally packs. And then they also announced a new expansion for Armada coming out, which is... Oh, I can't remember what it's called. It's called something. Well, it'll be ship shape. Isn't that a campaign expansion? Or is it they just released one, right? That probably, they just released the, the Corellian Conflict, which is the campaign. And we actually have a Corellian Conflict campaign going on right now on Sundays, I want to say this. Yeah, is there a Star Wars Armada's day that we too. play? Like, is there... Oh, yeah, at the store? Yeah, yeah. every day. <laughs> every day? Okay. <laughs> no, mostly Wednesdays. Wednesdays is X-Wing, and there's a lot of Imperial Assault, and I think... I think they do Destiny on Wednesdays, and then Thursday is Armada, so we get a lot Sweet. of Armadas. And the store championships for Armadas is May twentieth. So. Nice. So sign up because yeah. uh, and if you're looking for Imperial Assault or those, you know, other, you know, Armada or X Wing, you have groups as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Just look. Usually, if you go on to Facebook and type Gigabytes, a billion groups come up. Yeah. So <laughs> we, all, we also have a page on the website for groups, so you can find it on there. Yeah. I may I set that one up. Yeah. So we can all find all. But those. yeah, no. Back. To, hey, see, see how we went from A to Sigma into something else. Uh, someone asked about it. That was, it, was so. clever. It was a good misdirection. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. No. A to Sigma has been really awesome. I've been really enjoying it. Uh, actually, started building more hunters. Or rather, Alex Drake started building more hunters for me because I hate <laughs> those models to build. So looking forward to playing that. I feel like if I were to get a Sigma army, oh my gosh, what would I pick? Brutes. Orcs. <laughs> Just do orcs. Everything. No, I, mean, I always liked the way Chaos looked. Yeah, but which brand? Corn. Corn? Yeah, because they don't have Slanesh, really. So They will. They'll they will, do, but they don't. Something. Slash was always, you know, I thought was the coolest thing, you know. But besides that, corn. I mean, Blood God, come on. Yeah. It's great. Well, the new, the new orcs are new corn stuff. It's cool. They have Blood Bound. Yeah. They just yeah. keep releasing awesome models. I think, oh God, the models are so great. They're so good. They're so great. Yeah. They really are. Yeah. Love it. Uh, so AOS. What's and then Destiny. Oh, it's so, Destiny stuff. This, yeah. Speaking of Star Wars, actually jumping in there. This released yesterday. Oh, and you were probably looking at literally all that's left. Yeah, so nice. we got we got forty eight boxes, and there's about two. there's a box and a half left. And this box in the bottom only happens because uh, a very nice lady came in last night and canceled it because she wanted to go buy some troll blood instead. Hey. So okay. we actually have a box left. So don't expect it to last long. Yeah. Uh, get it. Yeah. Get, get it. it get it. So it was awesome. We had like ten people in for the release thing. Uh, um, night, we had Robert course. asks, who would you rather fight, uh, 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? 100 duck-sized horses would be frightening. Uh, oh, man. They'd just be, like, kicking in the ankles like All crazy. All the time. They can a horse-sized duck? Because the smaller something is, the more it can jump. So, like, they have strong legs. They could just jump up on you. 
And kick uh, you in the face. And ducks are just evil so, creatures. So, I'm terrible at basketball, so I don't think that's true. <laughs> that's, that's terrible. Terrible at all sports, but mainly basketball. <laughs> You're okay at soccer. I'm thinking cats. No, if you, you know. saw me on Wednesday night, it was like, Geriatric wouldn't run around. <laughs> well, that's just your stress levels. Little eighteen-year-old kids kicking the ankles off. Some bruises. Oh, that—that's oh just love it. That's just not fair. You're tr- go, trying to keep up with eighteen-year-olds. It was. I had a proud moment though. I like dribbled past like four of their team and scored a goal through the legs of the goalkeeper. Whoa! Then we lost thirteen-one. And he says, <laughs> and he says he's not good. Now he does. This. I scored a goal and they scored thirteen. Oh, oh. oh well. <laughs> that, it, it, that was kind of like the mercy rule that Germany pulled on Brazil. Oh, they were they were trying. They my ankles felt that they were trying to stop me. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were definitely. Are you saying they just couldn't me. hack it? No, they were trying their best to hack. Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the delay, oh, the worst. Oh. But yeah, uh, my last. I'm, thing I'm going to go with a hundred duck-sized horses. I would have just like one thing to kill though. Oh wait, you know what? No, because then it, I got. How do you it, fight a whole bunch? Was there a hundred duck-sized horses? And then I got the image of the compies from Jurassic Park. Uh huh. Yeah. Horrifying. And yeah. Just jump up swarm and swarm tactics. Know, get at you. Swarm, swarm tactics. I hate swarm tactics. No, no, no. One big thing, you know. You can always bring some friends, maybe. Unless you have to fight it solo. Yeah, uh, tell solo. Jeff how much he's going to love Rune Wars. Oh, Jeff, Jeff you're really going to love Rune Wars. Uh, John, your brother says, it, "I think that's my shirt." <laughs> <laughs> so no, this is funny. This is funny. Funny story. So uh, we went. To, me and me and John went to Vegas last March, March last year, and uh, for for a show for a Gamma, and we were walking around, and literally twenty people must have stopped the street telling us how cute we were because we dressed exactly the same. <laughs> and we went to we went to the zombie burlesque show Aww. in the in the V. I think it was in the V. If you're ever in Vegas, go to the Zombie Burlesque show. It's phenomenal. I got dragged on stage. Zombie? Zombie Burlesque. burlesque. It's a burlesque show where they're like uh-huh. zombies and stuff. And I've heard like, it bites. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That was bad. They fall apart at the end. Uh, but they dragged me on stage, but it was so funny. They made fun of us the whole night because we were both wearing button-up shirts like this, and they called us the basic white boys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's fair. <laughs> Best night ever. Wow. Yeah. That, wow. Was, that was my trip to Vegas. It was Zombie Burlesque and walking or an Evil Dead show. <laughs> Jay says busted. <laughs> uh, Brian says Dude, the Merc's. video is on Facebook somewhere. If you go back last year, it's there. Oh, Brian Danner says Merck's tournament and demo day on May twenty first. Mm, May twenty first, Merck demo yes. day. And I believe he said if you don't have an army, there's no problem because he has billions. Yes. Oh so, boy. So you can I just... plan. I mean, hopefully, I can make it out for the twenty first. Yeah, show for that. It's awesome. Yeah, it'd be cool. Um, so then, last topic, which is one that we want to throw to y'all, whoever's watching. Y'all. Yes. Um, and even if you're not watching live, if you're watching, you know, the replay, um, how did you get into war gaming? Yes. So we have people who play, you know, the card games. We have people who just do board games or D and D groups, or whatever. But for today's topic, for those of you who do war gaming, how did you get into it? Yeah, so a hobby, yeah. um, how did you get into playing it? Some people just do the hobby, right? Some people just like to paint. Yeah, a lot of people just want to paint. Most of what I do is just painting. I wish I had time to paint. Oh. Mm. Mm. <laughs> one day. One, one day. day. One day again. So I'm trying to think when I first, like my first model I think was a Bones figure or something. I literally just that got like, a Yeah, one. the first time you, we were talking earlier about the first time you came in, you bought like four or five D&D figures. Yeah, that was it. And I was, was like, this, D&D I was like, this guy's weird. He's never coming back. Yeah, and then <laughs> I came back over and over again. So, and Peter, you've been—I've known you for a while, eight years. Yeah, but uh, eight years of pun and laughs. This is the reason why he's no longer properly sane as me. Yeah. Me, my puns, <laughs> and then he, he met and hired Mark, and it, he he, he oh, found yeah, that he Mark likes Shubuck. puns subconsciously, like. He'll tell everyone, maybe I, I hate play, them, I maybe, hate them. Maybe I should play Dark Outer because I'm start obviously making, masochist. He'll start so. making puns himself, and he yeah. doesn't admit to it, but he's pretty good at them as well. <laughs> but I started when I was oh, I 13, like about 18 years ago now, and uh, I walked into a you game store, now. yeah, and I saw the old armor cast uh, Phantom Titan, about three and a half foot tall, wow. and I went, I want in on that. Dad's like... What, what are we doing here, anyways? Let's get going. We got soccer later. I'm like, no, that. I want that too. Nice, nice. Never That's got cool. it, but uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they don't make them anymore, and you can only get them like from hassling people online. Be like, I want it. Give it to me. Give it to me. It's, yeah, it's not worth it. Like, just a, online. Just do it. Yeah. So I jumped into Eldar and. and a little bit of Tyranids over the years, but oh, just... I forgot you played Tyranids, that's right. Yeah, just no, a you'll, little you'll, dismattering. You'll be really happy in 8th edition then, because Tyranids are going to be really good. Again, going back to the question from Joe earlier, hordes of Tyranids, because I know Joe, if it's Joe Groves, he's also a Tyranid player. Hordes of Harmagons and Termagants. 
just here it is. Good. Mm-hmm. It's not just going to be the. Uh, just a million of them. Oh, so Joe, Joe says uh, he his friends knew he loved Starcraft and invited him to play. Oh yeah, Zerg, like, Tyranids, Zerg, 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 you know, yeah. Well, Zerg, much. Zerg, are a ripoff of the Tyranids. So a little known fact: originally Warcraft, Blizzard was hired by Games Workshop. From my understanding, this is the story I've heard. So, and I just said it was a fact, even though it's a story I heard. Uh, <laughs> apparently, Blizzard was hired by Games Workshop to make a Warhammer game. Uh-huh. Made the whole game, and at the end, Games Workshop decided not to do it or something like that. So Blizzard, in kind of an FU, said, oh, well, we're just going to change the name slightly, change a couple of details, and it became Warcraft. Wow. You mean StarCraft? No, no, no Warcraft, Warcraft. Warcraft. Warcraft was first. Okay. Warcraft. And then, Damn. then they made StarCraft. But, I mean, if you look at Protoss, it's pretty much Tau, and you look uh-huh. at Zerg, it's pretty much Tyranids, so. Yep. Oh, and then, of course, Aliens inspired them all. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, high five for Aliens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, love the Aliens. If you want to give him a good side too, that's also, you know, Maker's Mark and Aliens. That's a good night right there. That's, that's good stuff. Even Prometheus, though? I like Prometheus. Yeah, Zerg are based on Nids, Protoss, or Eldar? Depends on where it oh, goes. Is it Eldar? I thought it was Tau. No, yeah, that could be Eldar. Probably more Eldar. Probably. Tau's like, you know, battle suits and stuff like that. I thought Protoss was Although, no, yeah, because Tau has the blue that. cast. What are they called? The sky cast or whatever? No, what are they called? It's the water cast. The water cast. Water cast, that's the one. Yeah, so they kind of look like... There's there's the earth, the air, mm-hmm. the water, the fire, the fire, and love. You're talking about Captain Planet? <laughs> yes. Yes, he is. <laughs> Captain Planet Tom! Oh, yeah, I, I was kind love, of love, love, love is the greater good. Had you not gone with love, I would just be... <laughs> and the Avatar came. <laughs> <laughs> The greater good. Greater uh, Jay good. says he started a board game with Arcadia Quest in Dead of Winter. Oh, nice. nice. Dead of Winter's great. I've never played a full game. <laughs> Jeremy said he needs an army of Scots. Did he put two T's or one T? That, one T. Oh, good. Uh, taught you well. The closest to that would be, what, Age of Sigmar, the, the fire dwarves that... Yeah, fire slayers. Fire slayers. You have squats. You just pay them all like the blue tartans and stuff. And they, and they get to ride they're land not, drakes, which are wearing, phenomenal models. So yeah, so Joe says definitely Eldar. They're based on prophecy and doom and gloom. They also have dark brethren they do not agree with, along with a lot of other lore lines up. Yeah, it totally makes sense. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Fine, you win this round, internet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's All awesome. Right. Yeah, cool. other than that, what else do we have? Hey, we have new White Dwarf out today. Yeah. Oh, look at that. You two can have a Space Marine Grumbrindle. Grumbrindle. Mm-hmm. White Dwarf. So, that releases today. I don't know what info is in it because I haven't even looked, but there's some cool stuff. I like it. So, I think we get 30 copies of that every month, so it's kind of here. Um, uh, so, we're, yeah, that's pretty good. Any other questions people have about 8th edition? I really um, don't like the fact you have my phone over there. I'm like... <laughs> no, no, no. This is... No, no, no. No, he doesn't, he, he, he doesn't want me to look at it because I cut people off too much. Oh. Yeah. And I'm waiting <laughs> for when you complete a thought, you know. <laughs> the Ramblin' Man, complete a thought? Complete a thought, Yeah. We still never finished talking about 40K. We just moved to something else. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions on 40K, you can just go ahead and tap them in, ask them, and then we can answer it. Um, I think next week, uh, next Friday, um, we'll have more to talk about, obviously. More fun things. Um, I think, are we doing a kind of a... We're going to definitely do some demos on the Facebook Live. Uh, yes. Eighth edition. Yeah, we've out. got that. And definitely, whatever you want to see us talk or post and ramble about, mm-hmm. put it in. Because I promise we do look at it. Uh, Brian says, uh, "War games back in the '70s got he uh, got back in after playing the Space Marine video game. That was oh, so yeah. good. Oh, okay, you Space Marine! Oh, oh my God, tell you lost Space Marine. I, I would totally <laughs> play like a multiplayer of that here. Get, like, get that Space Marine. Just get a Marine. bunch of computers in and just you know, just Space Marines is awesome. Space Marine, man. Um, <laughs> when I found out there was a mini game called 40 I didn't even know about the miniatures." Until long, I think Dawn of War two came out or something like that. So like the entire time from Dawn of War to Dawn of War two, I had no idea that the miniatures were really. Thing. Well, you know it says Games Workshop, but you don't think oh yeah, you just think it's like a Games <laughs> Workshop. Yeah. But it's a cool like property, and you're like wow, this the interesting look, you know. But then really when I found out a, they were actually miniatures, it's really such a great world. Like I mean, it's, it's so just, much literature. Oh my god, yeah, so, so much good. literature that's been forgotten I brought and, home, and like, thrown out. Well, uh, don't get me started. I've got a lot up here. <laughs> Let me tell you. Oh, Jeremy last... asks, is there any indication of how many copies of 8th edition Giga is going to get? It's as many as I want. Yes! It's all of them. Just, to, I mean, can we pre-order? I, you, you can start pre-orders now. I'll take your pre-orders right now for whatever book she wants. Get, get, so, advantage of being a pretty yard, large store in the area is usually we get whatever we order. So That's good. Games uh, Workshop loves this. So we'll, we'll announce, again, as soon as we have a solid date and we know exactly what we can order. I mean, we'll take pre-orders for the book now for sure. Uh, Jeremy says the first 40k model he ever saw was in a local comic shop in Carrollton. Blood Angel Dreadnought. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You try to recreate it with Legos. What? Yeah, I've seen people do Lego stuff before. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. Sweet. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. so we hope you enjoyed today's episode. Is it an episode? No, it's just a live. Rambling. 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 I love it. Yeah. It will be up if you want to if you want to save it forever. It will be up on YouTube soon because we do have a gigabyte yeah, uh-huh. yeah, The other one's already up, so yeah. you can does it have watch Splash? That. Yes, it does. I love the Splash. The beginning and the ending is Splash. I love the Splash. Yeah. It's, the <laughs> it's not where you said it, though. Hmm. It's at the beginning. What? But anyway, so it's there. Yeah. The Splash is there. Yeah. Splash. If you don't know what we're talking about, go to Look Up Gigabytes Cafe on YouTube, and we're going to start posting these videos up onto there. So, mm-hmm. Awesome. Have a great day, everyone. Come to the store this weekend. Get some stuff. Play some stuff, etc. Join the groups if you're not in them. Um, hit the like button, especially the heart button, because that looks just so red and beautiful. Rick, yeah. Rick Flair? Yeah, woo! <laughs> Rick Flair. Yeah. Oh, Jeremy says this should now be called the Giga Ramble. Yeah. I think Ramble. that might be it. That might yeah. be it, yeah. Oh, we could also do this. <laughs> when you got nothing else to do, just sit and stare at our beautiful faces for an hour yeah. as we ramble. It's good. And, and, and Peter, too. And me, too, yes. Yeah. So, Atlanta going to win this weekend? Who are they playing? Uh, my brain is shot on that. I'm organizing a party around it, and I still can't remember. <laughs> He's going to this party, and you're all invited. Every single one of you. Good luck finding my place. 20 people? 70 people. It's pretty good. Um, Oh, yeah. We've we've had almost 30. Tell your your kids. BYOB, bring food, and we've got a grill. Or maybe more if we go to the nearby park. We can use that. It's like, what, less than a quarter mile from my house. Walk over to the park and use four grills there. Just cook out immensely. Nice. All right. Um, But, yeah. You just won't tell you the address. (laughs) No, no. Best of luck. (laughs) Address for here, in case someone's watching it, they don't know. Oh, oh, that address for here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, 1851 Rosal Road. Who doesn't know where Gigabytes is? You never know. Yeah. You've got to make sure. Please. They're on our Facebook page. That's true. You could look at it on the Facebook page. Shh. <laughs> Come be a hey. I want to take yeah. a chance. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. See you take soon. Care.